Hi hello friends, welcome back to the channel. How are you doing today? From this video onwards, I want to start a new series related to elbow leakage. Okay, so I want to cover all the concepts related to elbow leakage, like how does it happen, how does it introduce unwanted DC component in the baseband signal, like that. Even I want to even I want to talk about uh, uh, how to tackle uh, elbow leakage and uh, how to tackle uh, the effects uh, um, uh, introduced as part of elbow leakage. So to cover all these things in one video, it will take a lot of time. So I will go part by part. Um, so in this video today, I will talk about uh, only part one. Uh, in the part one, I will co cover the basic things and I want to cover up conversion and down conversion concepts with equations. So, so that uh, uh, with that basic uh, level, uh, we can talk about uh, the further concepts in the upcoming parts. So if you notice, so yellow leakage happens at the RF stage, right? But you might be a uh, physical air L1 uh, algorithm designer. So you might say that why do I need to know about RF stages when I am uh, part of a baseband uh, uh, algorithm designer. <coughs> the thing is, whatever the effects that are going to happen uh, at the RF stage, uh, they are going to show effects at the baseband uh, uh, signal processing level. So in this case, the unwanted DC component is introduced at the baseband signal, so which is going to cause problems uh, to our signal processing chain. So that is why even though you are a baseband uh, algo designer, you should know all the RF uh, uh, effects uh, or uh, RF impairments or IQ impairments, uh, how does it happen, what is it going to cause, so that you can design your algorithms very well. All right. So with this, let me start uh, uh, the very basic uh, uh, concept. Uh, okay. So what I will do, I will consider uh, XBFT, which is uh, uh, the which is the uh, baseband signal okay this is a, a time domain signal and i want to consider this as a, a real signal for now for a simplicity all right so let's say uh, if, if if you see the uh, spectrum of this in the time domain um, let's say this is the signal it might consist of various frequencies right in order to know the frequency what do we have to do we have to take uh, the fourier transform of xb of t if you take the Fourier transform and if you plot the frequency spectrum, then you will come to know that uh, 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 within this frequency range, uh, uh, we are having uh, the significant signal components. And uh, this is centered around frequency uh, zero, which is a DC frequency. So uh, let, let me take this as the example. The thing is, this particular uh, baseband signal which is containing the containing our information we need to transmit over the air so if we transmit if we want to transmit the same uh, low frequency signal uh, what is the constraint uh, you know the antenna size uh, the constraint is uh, the antenna size will be huge so one of the things what we what do we do uh, we actually do up conversion basically we want to ensure that this frequency is carried with uh, very high frequency uh, th this particular signal is carried with very high frequency so the when we do the up conversion the signal will be centered around the center frequency fc all right so if you clearly see see the thing is at frequency fc as well we have the same information um, what is actually presented the baseband so that we know when we do down conversion we can recover back but uh, mm, we will try to see that with equations how we can recover it back to do this up conversion again we need to go through uh, uh, the very basic uh, um, properties of Fourier transform let's say this was our time domain signal which we had considered right if you take Fourier transform let's say xb of f is the um, or xb of f is the Fourier transform of uh, xb of t now to shift uh, to this frequency fc what is the operation we need to do we need to multiply xb of t with uh, exponential e to the power of j2 pi fct then we will see that uh, the spectrum uh, has been shifted uh, to fc okay so but what is the problem here uh, the, the, uh, this is a complex quantity so this entire thing became complex okay and uh, uh, even this uh, is also complex and that's why we are seeing that again what is the basic property here whenever the signal is complex uh, the uh, spectrum frequency spectrum is not symmetric around the dc frequency so that's why we are seeing the spectrum only at one part again what is the problem here the, the thing is whenever you design circuitry right uh, we need to have uh, all the uh, uh, 
uh, real operations uh, because uh, the circuitry will actually produce the real signals so for that we will enter into the tx part okay so as i was telling the circuitry will uh, uh, produce uh, uh, the real signals uh, especially if, if we consider our uh, OTA right which is over the air we should be transmitting the real signal and uh, this should be time domain signal and this should be analog signal all right so if we consider the tx part so let's say in the beginning uh, uh, in, in, in the beginning like we let's say we have baseband l1 signal processing so we will have lots of dsp blocks uh, which takes uh, the input as bits and it will process and it will give the discrete uh, uh, time domain signal okay uh, so consider uh, for now that this is a black box uh, let's say the output uh, produced is xb in time discrete time domain okay um, then uh, this is real actually uh, because uh, we had considered the, the spectrum see this is the spectrum which we are going to consider the, that is uh, um, you know the symmetric around the dc frequency so this is real for now um, the thing is uh, we need analog signal right so this this discrete we need to convert into analog so we use the uh, dac so the first component which we are using is dac so it converted into xb of t so this is the uh, spectrum exactly we saw in the previous slide um so this is a frequency response so this entire thing we saw in the previous slide right now to transmit uh, xb of t uh, and we if we want to shift uh, we did this particular operation right in the previous slide but uh, uh, the thing is we cannot uh, do this uh, complex operation so we need to take the uh, real component uh, real part of it then if we take the real part of it we see that xb of t cos omega uh, ct is the equation uh, still whatever the uh, signal we want it is embedded here so we need to multiply this with uh, cos omega ct this cos omega ct will be generated using the local oscillator so this is a cos omega ct and the mixer mixer is nothing but the multiplier uh, so the output of mixer we will get xp of t cos omega ct all right so if you if, if you see the spectrum of this okay so i will draw it uh, in a very small uh, this one then uh, uh, this will have uh, at uh, fc and uh, one more component at minus fc so this is f is equal to zero so this is how uh, the spectrum of uh, this one will would look like okay so this is uh, uh, you can you can clearly see this is uh, the real because the spectrum is uh, asymmetric around uh, this, uh, the dc frequency and uh, this is a analog also and uh, this is uh, the real signal and uh, this is time domain so now we can pass it to power amplifier let's say this is gain is one for now for simplicity and we can transmit this to over the air now coming to the receiver part we need to do the down conversion right so first uh, we will receive the signal so the uh, signal will be xp of t cos omega ct linear this is lna is a low noise amplifier let's say the it has got unity gain and uh, and the signal at this point uh, uh, would be same all right now we need to use we need to do the down conversion so how do we do down conversion um so let uh, so I, I i'm going to multiply i'm going to use the same local oscillator which produces uh, the same center frequency and uh, and i will first multiply so if you multiply in the mixer uh, this is the equation let's say to normalize i will use 2 cos omega ct okay Two cos omega ct so if we do the math operations of this then we're gonna get like this so this is 2 fc this is centered at uh, 2 fc so then finally we get this one this is uh, again the time domain okay and uh, the real signal so if, if, if you see the spectrum of this we need to see the spectrum to analyze it better uh, though the frequency spectrum we, we're gonna see So this is frequency x axis so you, if you see there will be an impulse at 2 fc and there will be one more impulse uh, minus 2 fc this will represent this cos plus the baseband so whatever the information which we wanted it's uh, it's available here okay uh, so it, it's available here we need to extract this so basically we need to make this to zero how do we do that then we should have this low, low pass filter because low pass filter 
um, will eliminate a high frequency component we should design such a kind of low pass filter so the low pass filter how should we design so this is the uh, spectrum which we were seeing in the previous slide so the low pass filter can have a flat response uh, wherever uh, there is a, a signal and afterwards uh, oh, we cannot have we cannot have a abrupt uh, uh, transition um, this is a practical system so uh, we need to have some filter roll off okay on either side there will be filter roll off that's why even if the signal bandwidth uh, uh, is up to this point um, uh, but uh, we need to give some guard band uh, in order to accommodate the filter roll off okay so after doing this low pass filter uh, these components are eliminated and uh, we would get uh, uh, this particular baseband okay this is nothing but our xb of t so whatever signal we transmitted we got the same thing without any problem so this is true in the case when this local oscillator is very very idealistic and it is not going to have any kind of impairments and there is no elbow leakage and all all right i hope uh, the things are very clear uh, this is a basic uh, concept which uh, i try to explain over here uh, related to up conversion and down, down conversion now in the part 2 we will try to see we will try to, we will will incorporate the elbow leakage how does it happen and how it i was just going to introduce uh, on the dc component we will try to derive that with equations as well and we will also see with this uh, uh, how what are the effects of the baseband signal level all right i think the things are clear thank you very much bye bye take care